Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I have a new microphone this week. Good morning. Good morning. Maybe boost me a little bit. I think it's on. Check, check, check. Good, good, good. I've got a new microphone this week. It's interesting. We didn't do the music this morning, so everyone is being loud. So you're at home. You don't see this. We're glad you're with us as well. We are excited to enter into a new sermon series called Strange Stories, and we have a few things to celebrate this Sunday in particular. Celebrating 64 years of marriage, Jim and Betty Hayes. There you go, 64 this week. You make the screen, you make the screen at 50 plus years. That's the rule, 50 plus years. So if you're there and your anniversary comes up, we'll put it up there. Right. We also are celebrating our youth conference. Our kids came back. Um, let's see, I think we've got a picture of that. Uh, Carrie went, my wife went with our two boys. We had a small group, but they had a really good time. And we didn't know if this conference was going to be good because we've never attended it before. It's an intercultural conference. They all said they're going to promote it hard next year. It came up kind of quick. We couldn't really advertise it early. So it really was, my kids loved it and said, you know, the title is kind of odd, Intercultural Youth Conference. It, so it rolls it off rolls the tongue. Off it rolls off the tongue. tongue. It just rolls But they right had off. a great time. So can we just affirm all of our leaders and kids who went to that? And the rose, the rose is for uh, Eileen and Dan's seventh grandchild. There it is, the rose on there. Keeley was born on July 4th. Let us prepare for worship today in the Strange Stories series. We're talking about sorcery in the Bible. Let's open our hearts to God by listening to the prelude as we come into worship. Morning. Let us continue our worship this morning by standing and singing the intro. <clears throat>
Please join me in the call to worship this morning. In you, we take refuge. In your righteousness, you deliver us. You have taught us your ways, and we gather to celebrate your wonderful works. Through your great love, you bring us near. We unite our voices to sing your praise. Let us worship God. Please be seated. Ours is a gracious and loving God. Ours is a forgiving God. At this time in our worship service, we go before God confessing our sins, first silently and then together. Let us pray. And now together. Loving and gracious God, you are patient with us. We run away and you seek us. We make foolish choices and you teach us the better way. We hurt you and others and instead of hurting us back, you forgive us. Help us, we pray. Help us reveal your glory and goodness in our living that we would bear the imprint of Christ throughout the world. Amen.
And now, friends, hear and accept the assurance of God's faithfulness. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable and perfect. Friends, believe the promise of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Friends, let us continue now in our time of worship as we go before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, your blessings flow forth freely and forever from the gracious mercy of your loving heart. We rejoice in the wonder of being the heirs of such an incredibly good fortune. We know that as we come once more in your name to your house to be your people, you will claim us and make us your own. Enter our hearts, make them your dwelling place, take our lives and direct our steps. As your people called and chosen, loved and useful, we meet to worship and to rejoice in you and trust in you. Hear us as we raise our voices on behalf of the people of God. Hear us as we pray for your world, for the nations of the earth, send peace among people. Guide our leaders with wise counsel, direct our ways that we may do your work. Forgive us where we have allowed jealousy and fear of being shortchanged or when not having enough keeps us from living as your people with a different vision of you, a vision that is wide enough to know that you love all of us. Help us to live as though this is so. Hear us as we pray for the world nearby, for your children in harm's way, we pray for safety. For your children without homes, we pray for compassion and awareness. For the victims of gun violence and all violence, for the ailments of our community, we ask your healing touch. Guide our ways and provoke a right response from us. Help us to live as though we know our good fortune of being your beloved. Help us to put aside all competing messages that would distort your love for us so that we might remember that we are claimed by you and respond in joy. Hear us, O God, as we pray for your church, for the Church Universal, for the Presbyterian Church, and for our own congregation. We pray again, O God, that your Spirit would be poured out on us in surprising ways, in new ways. Give us a vision as life as you intend it, the new life we receive in Jesus Christ. We make these in all of our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we'll invite the children to come forward. I think there are a few here, a lot of people on vacation, but oh, there are some friends here. Good to have you, good to have you. Excellent, excellent. You never know each week who's gonna be here, who's not, but same thing with adults, right? People are running around, it's hot out. Well, you got places to go, vacation. My family's on vacation, and in, uh, right now they're in South Carolina. So it's good to have you. Yeah, they're in South Carolina. We do that every year. That's south of your aunt? Lovely. Well, guys, I need your help this morning. I'm going to have you guys help me with something. Uh, Ms. Stephanie's already said she's going to help us, but we're going to ask her to help us. And then I'm going to ask Griffin to help us as well. And it's something we haven't prepared for. I think they can handle it. So first, let's say, hey, Miss Stephanie, can you help us? One, two, three. Hey, Miss Stephanie, can you help us? That was OK. 
let's see if we can get the congregation, because you've got a part to play there. Let's all ask the same question. One more time. One, two, three. Hey, Miss Stephanie, can you help us? At the end of the service, you guys don't see this part. We've started having elements in worship that we sing so that you can hear them. You know, there's that song at the beginning, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, right? Everything shout and sing. Okay, we do that, and we do the one you just heard, but there's one we do at the end that I want to start doing on Wednesday nights for kids, and also maybe some Sunday school if we get someone comfortable doing the tune. So Griffin, can you pull up the last song that we do when we leave? It's, it's, I think the title is Go Now in Peace. And so this is the song and the words. So how many of you have never, we pull up the, he's going to find it. Have you guys heard that song? Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will be with you, go with you each hour of every day. So you've heard it? Okay, good. Well, we're going to let the congregation sing it to us, and here's why. All right? When they sing this, they're not just singing a tune. They are saying something very important. God will be with you each hour of every day. Do you know that when you say things like that out loud, it changes you? Especially if you pay attention to what you're saying. If I said to you, you know what? I've been to your house, and this is true, right? I've been to your house. You know what? You're a great person. I like spending time with you and swimming with you. That was fun. Doesn't that make you feel good? Now, you know, when you say it back to me, it'll make me feel, but you know what you need to say sometimes? Sometimes to yourself, I'm a fun person. And you think it's funny, but there are a lot of people who don't believe good things about themselves. So when you hear this, I hope you remember this, we are saying some important things. God will go with you every day. We're going to let them sing it to us, and we're just going to enjoy it. So congregation, with a little tune, you're used to this. If you could just give us your best rendition. We are grateful for you. So go and enjoy your Sunday school hour and know that this year we'll be learning that song and singing it sometimes in a fun, maybe a different way because the words are important. They're saying something about God and you and me and us and you're a part of our family. So go now in peace and enjoy your Sunday school hour. Thank you, everybody. Turn and greet somebody as we excuse our children and our youth to their classes. Thank you, Griffin. Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Our first scripture reading this morning comes to us from the 133rd Psalm, verse 1. Hear now the word of God. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Our second reading comes to us from 1 Samuel chapter 28, beginning with verse 5. When Saul saw the camp of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor, and he said, conjure up for me, please, and bring up for me whom I shall name to you. But the woman said to him, behold, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who are mediums and spiritualists from the land. Why are you then laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? Saul vowed to her by the Lord saying, 
as the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. And then the woman said, whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul saying, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. The king said to her, do not be afraid, but what do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a divine being coming up out of the earth. He said to her, what is his form? And she said, an old man is coming up, and he is wrapped with a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and did homage. And then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me, bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am greatly distressed, for the Philistines are waging war against me, and God has departed from me and no longer answers me, either through prophets or by dreams. Therefore, I have called you, that you may make known to me what I should do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Strange stories from Scripture. In the context of the Old Testament, there are several that we'll be covering. And I invite you to take out the bulletin for notes if you want to take notes. There's an action step that's very concrete and straightforward as we look at strange stories. And today we're talking about sorcery. Obviously in this story, it's odd. You should have several questions. Uh, what, what, what is going on? Uh, is this, does this happen? And maybe to make it more relevant, we're going to be asking a question this week, but let me ask you a question. This is a picture I took on my way to burn it. And are they, it's a little psychic boutique. You've probably seen them. And it was there on, at the light. And the question I have, are, are they real? And is it harmful? If you take a one-to-one -one simple takeaway from the story today, uh, you, you might come away with something I grew up with was as, as a child. My mother was not the spiritual leader of our home at all, uh, and I, I say that lovingly, but she did have two rules, never use God's name in vain, and she would set it, there, something must have happened around these two things. Someone at my age, 10, 11, 12, must have used God's name in vain in a cuss word, and my mother heard it, and she let me know, if you say it, you're done, and if a friend says it, you're done. My mother never used that tone with me. You know, looking at me like that, said it multiple times, wanted me to know, say that in the house, you're in trouble. And the other one was, I don't want to ever see any Ouija boards or any kind of psychic stuff in the house. It's, it's offensive to God. That's how I grew up, with a very one-to-one, -one, don't mess with these things. So the question is, for those of us here who may have seen that, is it really that big a deal? Is that where I'm going today? Or is there something deeper that we can take from this story. And this is the question we'll ask every week from these strange stories. What is God teaching us today? And that's what I ask you to open your heart to. And even if you leave and have some things at home, for you to find your own, what is my takeaway? Not just about this practice, but other practices that may be problematic in God's sight, because you're a unique individual as am I. That means our relationship with God works in certain ways individually that won't work for everybody. Some things may be verboten for you because of how you grew up that are not for me. You've got to find those things. But there is something God is teaching us in this story that is fascinating. So I'll start with just a little deeper truth from the year 1985. Do you remember where you were in 1985? Here's me in 1985 and 86. Look at that guy, huh? Look at that hair. There was hairspray involved. That was the thing then. I had kind of what they called the flock of seagull hairdo, kind of the little longer there. My hair naturally wants to do that and be a mullet. Just that's what I've accepted. But that era, I had a lot of good friends. One of my friends was a really good person. She was beautiful inside and out. She was, for the group that we were that had a lot of, you know, teenagers, we're somewhat shallow. Um, we're learning who we are, not really confident in who we were. This particular young lady was good. If she heard us making fun of somebody or teasing somebody, which is cruel at that age, she would make a point of inviting that person to eat with us, shaming us silently. If, if we did certain things, she would correct it by her behavior. She was good. That girl lived with a lie for 20 years. 
She was good, she was smart, she was athletic. Somewhere in her upbringing, somewhere, somebody told her some things that were a lie. She was not a princess in God's kingdom. She was not as beautiful as other girls. She was not as smart as other girls. She was not as athletic. It just came out in everything she did. She had a self-esteem issue, and it was noticeable because she was so great. I saw her 20 years later at our high school reunion, and you could just see the toll it had taken on her, decisions she had made. And I didn't know as a kid, and I probably didn't even realize it then, but I've made a point over the years to just send her a note saying, you know, I remember you, you're a good person, just trying to be affirming. I believe there's something about that message that we need to claim from this story that's bigger than sorcery. The issue is what is at work when Saul does this. There are two things to say today when we ask what is God teaching us. And I'm going to ask you to say them both and to think about them both. Number one, would you say it with me? Nurture a right relationship with God. And number two, proclaim the promises of God. We're going to say them both one more time and I'm going to ask you to think about it. And if you just think of promises of God, if you're taking notes and want to, promises of God, do you have them? And do you proclaim them? Do you have a right relationship with God that you nurture? I mean, you work at it. Like any relationship you have, you work at it. And are there promises that you say out loud? Are there promises you speak to yourself? And worse, is there a lie that you say to yourself? In the sight of who God tells you you are, or what God has done, will do, are there things that aren't true that you wrestle with? Holy Spirit, come and illuminate to us what we should take from this story, not just the words that come out of my mouth today, but truths that come from you. Awaken divine truth in us wherever it may lead us to be in a relationship with you that's healthy and proclamations about you that last for eternity. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and all of God's people said, in dependence upon Holy Spirit, amen. We look at the backstory, what we didn't read, Samuel had died, and this is the first part of the text. Samuel had died. Samuel was Saul's go-to prophet. Samuel was the one who anointed Saul to be Israel's first king. This is not just anybody. This is God's first king who's doing this, Saul. Samuel had died. It's the context. Saul's a little rattled. His go-to connection to God is gone. We read that Saul had removed mediums and spiritists. Saul himself had gotten direction that this was a no-no for God's people in trying to form an identity, in trying to form a people who were after God's own heart. God had directed Saul through prophets and other things to get rid of this stuff in the land. The enemy, sorry, that's not NMP, that's my misspelling, the enemy camped where Saul could see them, and we read he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. This is the setup to what we read today. He saw the enemy, his go-to comfort with God is gone, and he's frightened. We read a little further. When Saul inquired of the Lord, he didn't get anything back by any means. Now, there's an issue here with what we just said. Nurture a relationship with God. Don't nurture a relationship with pastors and things for your spiritual connection to God. Because then when those people are gone, and this is very common in churches, a pastor leaves, people don't like the new pastor, I have three friends, three who are unemployed, who followed long-term pastors because people had a connection to the style and the deep commitment. They were good pastors. It's just too hard to follow. You're not here to worship Paul and me. You're here to have a relationship with God directly, and you can. So what does Saul do? He gives it a whirl. He, he tries, but the implication perhaps is he's a little rusty. He couldn't get it to work, so he's frightened. His comfort is gone. What does he do? He goes to his servants. Now, again, this sounds demeaning and rude, but there's people you go to when you're in trouble. And I'm not trying to be offensive, but you don't ask someone at the grocery store you're running into, hey, I got, I got a problem. What do you think I should do? <laughs> you go to people who you know in a deep conviction He's getting desperate, is what we're reading in the story. He's just going to anybody. Hey, go. And worse, he's being sneaky. He didn't want people to find out. Behold, we know a medium at Endor. We read a little further. 
this, this idea. Now pull up the next picture for me, please. Oops. The next picture, sorry. The, the, go back to the, other, the picture, sorry. The, the, the picture, yeah. I just misspoke. So the question is, are you looking for spiritual and divine wisdom from buddies on a bar stool or brothers and sisters in Christ? There's a difference. There's a difference. Everybody loves cheers where everybody knows your name. There are lots of places where people know your name and they will laugh and comfort you when you drink too much and throw up in front of them. Hey, buddy, I got you. I'll clean that up. They won't tell you to stop. I'll always be here for you. Those are buddies on our bar stool. We need brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a lunch Paul and I went to, and it was interesting. I didn't, didn't ask permission to use the picture, but sorry if you remember here. Hey, guys, I'll see you in the back. That's what happens. We had lunch, but there's Andrew, and there's his son, and he's going off to serve. He said, hey, can we, can we pray? He's going away to, for a new tour with the Coast Guard. Just right there at the table. You know, everyone's around. There was no, no, this is weird. Let's go somewhere people don't see us. This is who we are. We are a people who pray for one another, the promises of God. You should be comfortable asking for God's favor and blessing, and you should remember you can do it anytime and anywhere because there's another message out there. There's another reason that people go to psychics and mediums or anything they can think of for direction because they don't believe they have access to God themselves. We read a little further. Saul sneaks out at night. He does all this. And even when the woman warns him, he's got all kinds of red flags. The woman warns him. He pursues it anyway. There are times in all of our lives, and we just have to be honest with each other, when we do not make good decisions. When we're sick, when we're frightened, when things are pressing in on us, when we perceive things that are not God's promises, but we've taken them anyways, we make bad decisions. You need brothers and sisters in Christ who you can go to unashamedly and say, I'm struggling with something, I'm frightened. A person who's not going to tell everybody, a person who just says, I will pray for you and I believe God's promises for you. I don't know how you put that into words other than to say, nurture a right relationship with God and nurture relationships with others. And proclaim those promises of God and be around people who proclaim them for you when you can't. Can I get an amen? amen? So here's the image and the question that we come back to. Are these things real and is it harmful? Just in general. Now, I, I'm not one. I am not. To design a church culture with you that says, here are the rules. Don't do these things. Do do these things. What I do believe, and just... I think there are people who can tap into things because they pay attention, and it is an element of life that is spiritual. How can we believe that God is real and Holy Spirit is real if we don't believe that there are other things that are real? And I'm not saying all these people are bad. The question is, really, why would you risk going to a person who will give you some interpretation of the future or life when you can go to God yourself right now. You can go to people who have a best message. I found out a little later, my mother, there's a place in Florida called Casadega, and a lot of psychics live there. We had friends who, who, who grew up in, there. And it's a whole place of psychics, and you can do whatever you want. This seems like it's going to go off the rails for a minute. But I recognized why my mother was so scared of it. She was rattled. She went with some friends, and did, they did some readings or whatever, and she came home rattled. And I didn't find out until later that it had rattled her, not because it was real or not real, but because the idea was implanted in her mind to do something. And she realized, I, I don't know this person from anything. I, I, don't, I don't have a clue what this person is. And it rattled her deeply. Saul was so frightened. He was a king who had access to God like no other person at that time. He was anointed to be the first king. If he can be rattled, we can be rattled. 
we read a little further. Perhaps, again, an interpretation of things, of what's going on. The king said, hey, what do you see? The medium said, I see a divine being. She doesn't say she sees Samuel. She says, I see a divine being coming out of the ground. He said, well, what's his form? We read a little further. She said, it's an old man, and Saul knew. There is something significant here. We don't know what it was that happened. But there is a phrase that I have lived by, and I'm so glad someone told me, as a mentor, this truth. And he says it all the time. Brian, nobody fools you like you fool yourself. Nobody fools you like you fool yourself. There's a picture of our children here at Mo Ranch. Think of all the things they're being told. Just, it's, it's so hard to be a young person. You, if you're, you're not a young person anymore, you remember, it's just always been difficult. Those formative years, our children, in children's church now, think of all the things they're going to grow up hearing. Don't you want them to hear God will be with you each hour of every day? Don't you want them to know you're never alone? You never have to trace uh, rabbit trails of truth. It's right there for you. You've got a, a faith family, but you've got God for yourself. No matter how bad it gets, you've got a family to support you. No matter how, I wish that girl from 20 years ago had had somebody tell her some different truths. You are worth it. You are a child of the king. You're a princess. You are athletic. You are smart. I wish somebody had spoken that truth to her before whatever had sunken in and gotten into her stuck. Last week, I didn't finish the sermon because we ran out of time. We had baptisms and communion, and I was, there was just a lot of great things happening. But I wanted to reference something about why I don't do personal opinions and how everybody has a calling. And the example I was going to use is a lot of people in Presbyterian circles make fun of Joel Osteen. Uh, he, it's, he, I mean, he's a mega pastor. He's not watching this sermon. Sorry, Joel, if you are. Uh, he's not. He's got 30 or 40,000 people. I'm not making fun of him. But lots of people do. Do you know what he says Every, almost all the time? Yeah, this is my calling. I do positive messages. This is what I do. And you know what he makes people do? He, I say makes. He holds up a Bible and says, this is my Bible. This is what I proclaim to be true. I am creative. I am smart. And you think it's funny. It's true. He's right. Why can't our kids stand in front of a mirror or be on their knees at night at their bedside and say, God, I know you love me. I know you are true. And I know that you have a love for me that will never be broken. Shouldn't people proclaim God's promises? And can't we all agree that's a good starting point when we talk about sorcery or things we're not clear with? I, I'm not here to condemn practices that people may have, but I do want to ask a question. What are you seeking? And to whom do you go when you seek it? God has a divine truth for each one of us. It's imperative that we embrace those things. I might be wrong in a lot of ways. I'm not a perfect person. We have a prayer of confession every week. I say it with you. But at the core of my being, I want my children to know at the core of their being, you are a child of God no matter what mistakes your father makes, no matter what mistakes your church makes, you're a child of God. Every night, my children hear the same prayer. Dear God, we love you. You're the God of the universe who creates everything. The sun, the moon, the stars, the wind and the rain, the flowers and trees, oceans, rivers and lakes, canyons and valleys and deserts, everything powerful and everything beautiful. You made it all and you made us. They hear it. Our children hear it. You need to hear it again when we sing it today. Go now in peace, never be afraid, because Jesus promises he's going to give us something that no other person on earth can give us. My peace will be with you when you are troubled. Saul forgot. He got rusty. We don't know what was going on. But there's a reminder there. Nurture your relationship at all times. And proclaim the promises that are given to you and me.
believe it. God, come and speak to us as we think about what it means to belong to you and to not focus too much on a list of do's and don'ts which could never be complete, but instead to remember the things that shape us. We're loved by you despite ourselves. With all our flaws and all our mistakes, you extend an endless amount of love to us that forms and shapes us. Help us to never forget who we are in you, who you claim we are, your children. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, with timeless truths that we might have a relationship with you that is right in Christ and that we might proclaim truths for ourselves. Be with the children that we know who haven't learned this yet, that what would be ingrained in them would last for a lifetime and they would never doubt they are beautiful in your sight. May we all have peace that you offer us. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a moment, look at your notes, think of things that you might be hearing for yourself and consider what God is saying to us today through these strange stories. God, it is so easy to tell ourselves things that aren't true. We can boast about our own efforts, and on the other side of it, we can lose the worth that you tell us we have. Help us to find that right place that is humbly connected to you. We are not better than other people, but we belong to you. Speak to each one of us the way you need to speak to us, Holy Spirit to renew a right spirit in each one of us that is our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. Friends, let us now stand together and proclaim what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, in your bulletin, you'll find the connection card. I know that um, a few of the hymns that we sang today are from your request. So we're asking you to sign up and let us know what hymns you'd like to, to sing over the next few weeks. We're interested in having those. We're still looking for people to help us with our family fun night that's coming up on um, the 27th, and we need folks to volunteer for mobile loaves and fishes. If you have prayer requests, if you have an interest in coming to the new members class, which is the first Sunday of each month, you can sign up and we'll be glad to get a hold of you and talk with you about these things. Friend, God blesses us in so many ways, each and every day. And this is a time in our service that we respond to those blessings with God's tithes and with our morning offerings.
Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gifts that you have given us, and we would ask that you use our lives and use these offerings so that we may go and proclaim the truths we know of you, proclaim the good news of the gospel throughout the world. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Pastor Paul's going to lead us in the benediction. Just a reminder that we have prayer opportunity here at the front. Anytime you have a need, you should never hesitate and you should never be ashamed. You can always come if it's too private and just say you want to follow up later. But you should feel comfortable with anything to know it will be kept in private. We'll pray for you right up here. Anything big or small, come and ask. And remember that in the narthex, we've got opportunities. We're still doing the shopping bag challenge, but I've got to clarify the rules. You can't just take a picture of yourself with one of the new shopping bags. It's got to be at the grocery store. That's put you in the drawing for the prize. And so, not by the pool. Not by the pool. Just, hey, I got a bag. You got to be out and about using it. So that's one thing. And there's things in the narthex with um, missions that we're still doing. There's a big need for kids in our area with backpacks and school supplies. So get that information in the back as well when you leave today. And now, friends, may the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>